I've been doing a lot of uh, Ren reactions lately, and this video popped up. High Ren reactors expose humanity from Lower the Shield. So let's check this out. And I learned to soften, and that dance got easier. It is this eternal dance that separates human beings from angels, from demons, from gods. This video was so intense. And I must not forget, we must not forget that we are human beings. Wow. Wow. Uh, that was incredibly powerful. Let's lower the shields together and explore what happens during this performance of High Ren. I'm going to change this camera angle. Oh, got to change that. Do that on the fly, boys. Oh, I'm shrinking. Oh, I'm a little small. Am I in? I'm in. Okay. It's true, man. The high run really Hi, got me. Welcome to the channel. Hello. This platform has been blowing up recently, raising awareness to the importance of mental wellness. I hold a Doctor of Psychology degree and worked as a psychological assistant and trauma therapist for six years. Okay, so this is someone who definitely knows what they're talking about, one million percent. So I'm very excited to hear this man's take on what's happening. Uh, since March of this year, I've used, I have viewed many reactions to the video of Hi Ren by the performer Ren. At the moment of this video, Hi Ren is approaching 10 million views. Uh, when I first saw it, it was around 7.1 million views. There's something going on with inside it, but as I watched various reactors to it, I became aware of something, a pattern of something that was showing up in viewers. I first heard about it, first heard about Ren through the charismatic voice. A link to her channel is down below. That's a great channel if you haven't checked out uh, the charismatic voice. She does a lot of stuff with uh, uh, Will from Lorna Shore, who's got to be the the nicest metal metal guitar or um, uh, vocalist you've ever seen. <laughs> Sorry. And, and I've noticed that consistently the performance of High Ren has been activating people emotionally and within their body. In this video, I'm explaining some of the experiences that each of us can have and that I've been witnessing on the public forum. Content creators out here that are putting material out onto YouTube around mental wellness uh, are offering the world a sense of authenticity and vulnerability. I invite you to stay curious as to uh, this journey as we embark on it. I mindfully create photographs and publish some of them on my other channel, Sing to the Mountain Studio. The link to that is down below also. I was curious I hold what a that doctor was. of psychology degree and worked as a psychological assistant and trauma therapist for six years. Uh, as we move forward, I'll be stopping it off and uh, to watch the whole video uninterrupted. Uh, the link to Hi Ren itself uh, on Ren's channel is also going to be listed down below in the description. Let's lower the shields together. If you haven't done so, that's an amazing video. Uh, it, I accident, accidentally did it uninterrupted. It was just not planned. It was just like a... I'm pushing the mic away because nothing that I need to say is more important than what was happening on the screen at the time. So uninterrupted is the best way to view that, in my opinion. And explore what happens during this performance of High Ren.
one of the things I've noticed that uh, within some of the reactors is just as this scene is opening up, going from a empty room with some lights and uh, debris in the corner to what happens when individuals show up in the room, bringing it all in, the sounds that show up, the curiosity. Uh, one of the figures is masked. Uh, some of the reactors have immediately identified it as referencing some other movie that they've seen. Uh, my first reaction to it was, whoa, okay. It, w it felt really serious. It felt really, uh, something was about to s strike, you know? But yeah, I, immediately I, uh, I did notice and say something about our, uh, our fellow pig friend here. Uh, some reference a horror movie, some name it, call it a, a pig's head and uh, a butcher. And some simply say, oh, this is interesting. I didn't see that one coming. Without focusing yet on Ren, and then as they start to notice uh, the individual sitting in the chair, they start naming, wow, it's the person's dressed in hospital garb, uh, sitting in a chair, has a guitar. More curiosity starts showing up. And within the lighting here, already we're starting to see references to the shadow. Uh, on the floor, uh, this motif will start to show up many times visually throughout this uh, video. See, that was something that that's something that I did not notice. Uh, I was just kind of encapsulated with Ren, and in the beginning of the song, it was the guitar playing and then Ren, uh, and then obviously the combination of both. But this is why I wanted to watch this because there are so many ins and outs of these videos that I kind of, you know, incoherently, I do miss them. So, uh, especially on a first or second watch through. So to have someone here explain it, very comforting. Carl Jung named over 100 years ago. Uh, many psychologists will work with clients around it. There's lots of practices worldwide on what happens when we engage with our shadow and how do we make sense of it. So the shadow is already showing up here in just the opening scenes before we begin to really hear what the performance is. So, uh, commonality uh, across the reactors, many of them have been uh, musicians, uh, producers, uh, vocal coaches, etc. In this portion of the video, start to have comments of the surprise of having a classical guitar present, but then also the uh, tones and the pitch and the chords that uh, Ren is playing on the guitar. And also the skillfulness with which uh, the performance is unfolding. It still hadn't hit me at that point because obviously none of the uh, the vocals had started yet. But I still had no idea what was going to happen to me after a, f a mere few seconds after those guitar licks. And already within this, within the music, the music is starting to have references to a shadow side. There's a melodicness to it, and then occasionally something within the within the chords. There's a, a dissonance that Ren is adding into the music. tend to have an expectation of what the next notes are going to be played. And when something starts to break that structure, something inside us starts to create a tension in us. We'll, we may start to feel it, or, or we can block it. That's what our own shadow size will do is we'll, we'll block off from it and just say, well, where are we going with this? But it invites more curiosity along the way. He's absolutely right. Uh... As a musician, I know that when, maybe not this video specifically, but when I do watch other guitar playing videos and other drummers, I am kind of anticipating what the next note or notes may be. 
because of how trained my musical brain is to, you know, know when transitions are going to happen or expect, you know, rarity and other transitions. So yeah, absolutely. And as the progressions increase, tension starts to grow. Uh, some of the reactors had ident identified that the particular key that Ren is playing in, uh, I'm not a musician, so I'm not going to try to analyze that aspect of it, is one that is known to evoke strong emotions of, just strong emotions. And we're getting ready to shift into... I'm a musician, and I didn't know that either. Now, I'm not a trained classical musician. I... I'm aware of some of uh, notation, but I cannot read music. Like if you had put a musical sheet in front of me, I would not be able to uh, properly replicate it. <laughs> uh, at least I don't think so. But yeah, I I agree that um, that yeah, I, the key that the guitar is, especially the the notation is, it definitely feels uh, compassionate, raw emotional to a resolution oftentimes within music there will be a, a tension building phase and then a an ease and here comes the ease section several of the reactors have expressed surprise at big the time. vocalizations that were big time surprise i remember my eyes going wide and being like whoa that was another unexpected moment we're hearing from ren along with that melodic guitar playing the polyvagal theory starts to inform us that as we hear things as the as sound tone pitch tempo arrives into the nervous system it has the ability to activate uh, emotions and uh, a sense of safety or a sense of not safe within our own bodies as we're watching this. It That's so crazy because I actually just said this the other day that some of the, uh, when it comes to music especially, like I'm in a spot musically where it's not so much genres anymore. It's not so much uh, like collectives anymore to me it's it's notes there are certain notes amongst all genres there are certain notes that just like just well perk, perk my ears up and then i'm just like okay hold on back up 10 seconds and let's go again i need to know what that was yeah that's uh everything everything is here everything here is hitting hitting all the check boxes and some of the vocal coaches that i've seen uh charismatic voice was one identified that even within the pitching of Ren's tones, the shadow side is starting to be present. It's present in the guitar playing, it's present in the lighting, and now it's becoming present also in his vocalizations. Hi there, Ren. It's been a little while. Did you miss me? You thought you buried me, didn't you? Risky. Cause I always come back. Deep down, you know that. Deep down, you know I'm always in periphery. Rent on your pleased to see me. It's been weeks since we spoke, bro. I know you need me. You're the sheep. I'm the shepherd. Not your place to lead me. Not your place to be biting off the hand that feeds me. Here, there's a lot building now. This is like the the production is building a sandwich. We, we start with a base layer, and then we start adding things to it. The important things, whether it's... Uh, different layers of what might show up in the sandwich, and then condiments are getting sprinkled in periodically, whatever those might be. So throughout the performance, now the rest of the performance, the layers are going to continue to build. It's going to be quite the sandwich when we're done. Well, decades ago, there used to be a, a character would, that would build a sandwich called the Dagwood, which was some huge sandwich that was almost become unedible. Polyvagal theory starts to describe to us what's going on with our within our vagus system. I love the sandwich analogy. I think that's actually, it's kind of the same thing as like onion, this the layers. So it's the same kind of connotation, just a different version. System, our vagal system, as this kind of voice shows up, not even getting into what the lyrics are yet, of the prosody, the tone, the pitch of the voice, 
along with the lighting, the lights are starting to flash uh, chaotically. Uh, there's an expressive affect on Ren's face. All of this starts pulling emotions within us where our vagus system is monitoring what's going on. We're constantly sensing for ourselves, safe or not safe. It's kind of a dichotomous uh, experience. And meanwhile, more of the shadow is showing up. The lights flickering uh, change the way the shadows fall on the floor or fall on Ren's face and across his body. But hearing the shadow side in the voice also. Some of the, many of the reactors express more surprise, sometimes even shock and amazement, and sometimes even a little bit of anxiousness, anxiety, uh, apprehension in this portion of the song. Hi, Bren. Yeah, yeah. I would say that that's uh, rather accurate because you don't know exactly in this first verse until he gets to the second. You know, Ren, that's whenever you really start to kind of pick up on what's really happening. Taking some time to be distant. I've been taking some time to be still. I've been taking some time to be by myself since my therapist told me I'm ill. And I've been making some progress lately. And I've learned some new coping skills. So I haven't really needed you much, man. I think we need to just step back and chill. Now we're starting to experience it. Oh, this is two different sides of Ren speaking to each other. They're having a conversation at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, the one side, the one with the harsher sounding voice, um, might be viewed as a, a critic or something like that. Definitely a shadow side. Uh, as we start teasing apart what the shadow represents for each of us, it's it's a part of us that sometimes is useful, but oftentimes not, can sound critical, uh, demeaning, even mean-spirited and angry sometimes, versus the calm side, trying to say, hey, you don't understand what I got going on. I've got a lot going on. And as the languaging starts showing up, the, we pay attention to the words that both sides are saying to each other, add to then the response and the reactions. And we're looking at the emotions on the faces of the two different sides. We have neurons within ourselves. Uh, some neurologists start to refer to them as mirror neurons that say, hey, let's resonate with this. And to start to resonate at this level of emotion can actually start to create a sense of tension within our own bodies. And that's what had been showing up in many of the reactors as they've been reacting to this, God. knowingly or unknowingly, is that as we become fully engaged with this performance, it lands in us and pulls our own emotions forward in our own experiences with our own shadows. Ren, you sound more insane than I do. You think that those doctors are really there to guide you? You've been through this a million times. Your civilian mind is so perfect to always be lied to. Okay, take another pill, boy. Drown yourself in the sound of white noise. Follow this 10 step program. Rejoice. All your problems will be gone. Fucking dumb boy. Nah, mate. This time is different, man. Trust me. I feel like. Being able to start to notice some shifts within the calmer sign of Ren, starting to show emotional expression on the face of maybe worry or uh, something along those lines, contrasted with the other side, angry a little. I did notice that, that the facial expressions did become a lot more like in pain, you know, hurtful and kind of scared and, you know, like pouty in a sense. Hmm. That's a good, I, I never really like thought of that either. A little bit of contempt from the other side coming toward the calmer side. All the while, the lights change, the music sounds change. While all this is going on, the camera angles also, uh, the movement of the camera during different aspects of this is all another layer into this sandwich as that they're building here. Things might be falling in place And my music's been kind of doing bits too Like I actually might do something great And when I'm gone, maybe I'll be remembered For doing something special with myself That's why I don't think that we should talk, man Because when you're with me, it never seems to help How many of us don't want to be able to acknowledge for ourselves That whatever we're doing, our purpose in life, our meaning Is to change the world somehow whether it's at an individual level or on some grander scheme. He's exactly right. That's like, what do you want to do? I want to, you know, that's what everyone wants for themselves. Everyone wants for their children. Everyone wants for their friends. Ah. So many of us on the YouTube platforms are out here producing content and we simply want it to be noticed and recognized and be useful for somebody.
then the negative side of Ren says something and that starts. That's like, that's like exactly why I do YouTube and exactly why I stream. And I feel like that, um, I feel, I've, I've, I feel like that I have something positive to contribute to the world. And I, you know, in a non arrogant, non cocky way, or in the most humble way, I just, uh, I want to meet people. I want to experience things and enjoy however much time we have here and to try and connect as much as possible. So yeah, that's like, and that's huge for my mental health because being able to have people to reach out to at any level is a wonderful thing. And you guys have been wonderful for that. So please join my Discord. Link in the description. Huh. First, to evoke more emotion, more identification within ourselves that, oh, my other side criticizes me, also telling me that I'm not good enough. You think that you can amputate me? I am you, you are me, you are I, I am we, we are one. Split in two, that makes one, so you see. You gotta kill you if you wanna kill me. I'm not left over with dinner, I'm not scraps on the side. Oh, your music is thriving, delusional guy. Where's your top 10 hit? Where's your interview with Oprah? Wow, well, your Grammys, Ren. This is a space where so oftentimes within the reactors, they identify verbally for their audience and being able to see the expressions on the reactor's faces also. A sensation of sometimes they will say that they're getting the chills, they're getting goosebumps, goose flesh, yeah. the hair standing up on their arms. Uh, a couple of them even identified that they're starting to sweat at this point. While they're identifying that some, some of them have identified that they're having strong emotions here also, that there's something in this piece where the, what this side of Ren has to say is harsh. You got to kill you if you got to kill me. Yeah, oh, that can really be scary. And here comes fear, and and it shows up in our bodies just simply as viewers, whether we have these explicit thoughts like this ourselves, or whether we can simply identify with, wow, that can really be hard and scary to have that going on within us, and what do we do with that? It's especially hard to deal with if it's on a level where most if not sometimes at the very least it kind of feels out of control to where you don't really get a a say in your mood per se like the the i said it the other day your <clears throat> accomplishments uh, accomplishments minimized your inconsistencies maximized magnified that's like my fear amongst I can't say it's a number one fear. It's a fear. Uh, it's a definitely top five. I um, I feel like we do a lot of things and we live in such a what have you done for me lately society that what we have done gets left and not acknowledged because it's the past. And but you know you have to know. Don't forget about your path. Your path on the way to where you're going is how you got there. So you need that. So the conversation continues back and forth. Oh, uh, yeah, but my music's not commercial like that. I never chase numbers, statistics, or stats. I never write hooks for the radio. They never even play me. So why would I concern myself with that? But my music is really connected. And the people who find it respect it. And for me, that's enough because this life's been tough. So it gives me a purpose I can rest in. Man, you sound so pretentious. Ran, your music is so self centered. No one wants to hear another song about how much you hate yourself. The performance progresses. It's turning into an argument now. Yeah. From one side to the other without labeling the sides the reactors have been starting to get pulled into it many of them identify with them themselves what it's like for them but then also how harsh it is can be for anybody uh, most of us because we are human we do have a couple different ego states uh, aspects of ourselves that sh start showing up all the while the nervous system is connected with all of this the nervous system will try to connect with what our thoughts are and send us information. But sometimes we got this unconscious aspect of ourselves. And in essence, this is where the shadow resides, is in the unconscious and subconscious. So the body can start sending us signals of tension, of tightness, of goose flesh, of sweating, an urge to want to pull away and withdraw. And yet the thinking brain will say, no, let's keep watching this. Let's keep going. Many of the reactors I'd seen 
uh, will actually pause it and there'll be a hard cut, not wanting their own emotional affect to be shown. But there's a lot to come still. I, yeah. Uh, I had no fear in that moment. That was my <laughs> push the mic away moment because, like I said, nothing that I was going to say was going to contribute or add or anything. All it was going to do was take away from the art and the performance that was happening. And for me, I just needed to soak it in. That was... That was a for me moment that just happened to be on camera. And that's as full disclosure as I can make that. The layers are still being piled on. The argument is intensing. Uh, the, the conflict is building as, as they continue to go on. You should be so lucky. Having me inside you to guide you, remind you, to manage expectations, provide you perspective. Nothing you neglect it, I get it. You want to be a big deal. Next Jimi Hendrix, forget it. Man, it's not like that. Man, it's just like that. I'm inside you, you twat. No, it's not, man, you're wrong. Now, starting to be able to see the worry on this aspect of Ren. Yeah can evoke within us our own sense of concern and worry. If we're identifying empathically, maybe even compassionately, our compassion might be building saying, "We, I want to do something to resolve this. I want to give this guy some relief. They're taking us down this path. They're building layers to it saying, oh, no, you're along the ride with us. And what shows up then, the, what the reactors have been starting to articulate is that they're feeling it. They're fully engaged with it. They're in a, becoming into it a, a state of wow in all. It's almost like a trance-like state is how I can kind of describe it. It put me in a, like in, in that zen-like to where it was okay to be vulnerable because nothing that was going to be here in that high run video, nothing that was going to be there was going to hurt me but help me. So it was allowed me to be vulnerable and it allowed me to fully put my guard down and like actually take in everything and fully digest everything that he was saying, implying all of it. So yeah, I definitely agree with that as well. Awe, awe is an intense emotion, awful or awesome. Could be that we're, uh, that the reactors are starting to hold both of these Conditions, conditions of awe as this is unfolding. Oh, when I write, I belong. Let me break the fourth wall by acknowledging this song. Ren sits down, has a stroke of genius. He wants to write a song that was not done previous. A battle with the subconscious. Eminem did it. Played on guitar. Plan B did it. Man, you're not original, you criminal rip off artist. The pinnacle of your success is stealing other people's material. Ren, mate, we've heard it all before. Oh, she sells seashells on the seashore. Here it is. Uh, this Ren is mocking the other Ren for all the stuff that he's done calling him out on stealing material from other people. And the content creators have identified this. They've even recognized, oh, well, isn't that what a lot of us do? We're creating something solely, absolutely original is very challenging and difficult, so we pick and choose and we borrow. To call it out, to be mocked for it, can feel extremely harsh on the inside. And so then here we are as viewers, we might start to identify also that, wow, what's this all about? Strong emotions, strong body sensations still. Teasing out, being able to really get into what it is that the body is sending upwards toward the thinking brain while watching this. Oh, fuck you. I don't need you. I don't need to hear this. Because I'm fine by myself. I'm a genius. And I will be great. And I will make waves. And I'll shake up the whole world beneath us. That's right. Speak your truth. Your fucking god complex leaks out of you. It's refreshing to ask for you say it instead of downplay it. Uh, music is all about the creative process and if people can find something to relate to within that then that's just a bonus fuck you i'ma fucking kill you ren i'ma fucking kill me then let's fucking have you ren so oftentimes the reactors have had moments where they've realized that this is tapping into maybe their own experiences of having known someone that may have died by suicide uh, maybe they've had their own suicidal ideations. It's not a common, not an uncommon experience for many of us if we make it through life that very likely somebody that we really care about may end their life uh, by their own hand. And yeah, yeah, I am very familiar, unfortunately, with that type of uh, stuff. 
I, I couldn't even put a number on it if I had to if I had to try and guess how many not just close friends but people that you're acquaintances with people that you're familiar with throughout your entire life that have taken theirs and uh the the heavy the heavy thing to to live past because you feel like you're just forgetting them but you're not you're embracing them and you're loving them and thinking about them all the time thinking about a few myself and that lands hard to have reminders of it we may have the our own thoughts sporadically if we struggle with our own uh, sense of mental wellness of anxiety and depression uh, and whatnot that wow this can be a harsh conversation to have whether we're come in empathically engaged and compassionately engaged with what's going on between the, the two sides of Ren here, or we're thinking of our own experiences and we're bringing them in, or they're coming in whether we want them to or not. This kind of a dialogue right here is activating some harsh memories for many of us as, as we move through it. Uh, it can be overwhelming. Uh, this is part of what's been going on with some of the reactors is that it taps into the humanness of the whole platform that all of us here on YouTube, we are human, and we do experience emotions, we do experience conflict. We're not always absolutely certain of ourselves, but this is also an element of being human to, uh, of all of humanity. I do it, watch me prove it. Who are you to doubt my music? Cause I call the shots, I choose it. Die. Yeah, I call the shots and so I choose who survives. I'll tie you up in knots when I lock you inside. This section here as, as it's coming up oftentimes is a turning point for many of the people that have been reacting uh, many have been uh they, they show up on youtube and they they want to be stoic they don't want to let emotions show they name it they go i i can't let my audience see that i might tear up once in a while some of them i have no problem <laughs> i think it's been very clear i have no problem letting it all out because I would do the, ex I mean, I'm, I'm a person. You're a person. This guy on the screen, he's a person. Ren is a person. And we all feel emotions. And I understand the, I understand. I understand what he's talking about with certain, especially like streamers or YouTubers not wanting their fans to see them like weak or, you know, and it, because you use this platform as an escape from that. But you can also use this platform as a way to heal that. <clears throat> and I think that he's pointing out a really, really good point. Absolutely embrace that. The, their authenticity and vulnerability just flows through. And many try to block it, which is all shadow stuff. How we navigate with our shadow is so important and, and what it means to us. So as this section starts to unfold, it starts breaking through, getting behind the shields that many of the reactors uh, try to hold up. The invitation as uh, we began this was to lower the shields. And lowering the shield then exposes us to being vulnerable and to feeling fully what might be going on. <sighs> Newsflash! I was created at the dawn of creation. I am temptation. I am the snake in Eden. I am the reason for treason. Beheading all kings. I am sin with no rhyme or reason. Son of the morning. Lucifer and the cry father of lies. Mustopheles. Right here is one of the spots where there's a shift in the making of the sandwich. Uh, this aspect of Ren. I'm so glad we're back to the sandwich. Looks the camera, looks right down the barrel of the camera, looks us in the eye to come face to face with this side of ourselves being presented to us, the shadow side, looking us in the eye, our own shadows looking back at us, or we're looking into the eyes of our own shadow. That could be harsh. That can That's be hard. heavy, heavy so stuff. It starts coming out through many of the reactors then. Uh, they're, it's an absolute turning point uh, as they're noticing it. Some of them are calling out their physical responses. Some are... Uh, simply naming the emotion that they're experiencing and some are even saying, I wanted to stop it, but I'm not. And somebody will, at, right around here will take a drink. <laughs> that can be a way of engaging with the body to give a little bit of relief to the body in the presence of uh, a moment of emotional engagement. Wow. Wow. Okay, so that's a deep thing that I never thought about. Obviously, people talk about whenever you're like, uncomfortable your body language that is probably a characteristic that i will now think about 
while I'm not only like reacting, but watching other reactors and see what things and how they affect them by reading their body language. Didn't even think about that. I wonder how many times I've been guilty of that. I don't know. In the blender, deceitful pretender, the banished avenger, the righteous surrender when standing in front of my solar eclipse. My name is stitched to your lips, so you see, I won't bow to the will of a mortal, feeble and normal. You wanna kill me? I'm eternal and mortal. I live in every decision that capital. Right here in this spot is where all the sensory modalities that uh, I've been identifying to activate the polyvagal system. It's the explosion. Are coming together. The lighting, the, the tone, the pitch, movement within Ren. We're, we're seeing movement. We're hearing the sounds of the guitar. We're hearing the sounds in his voice. We're seeing images on his face. We're seeing the lights flash, the coloring in the room, the movement of the camera. It's all coming in, activating our nervous systems. And the nervous system wants to find relief from it. That's chaos that causes the vision. I live inside death. In this part here, the talking, the singing stops, and the music keeps taking us up. The vagus nerve innervates with our nerves that activate that are activated through hearing. So we're hearing these pitches, these tones of the guitar, taking us higher and higher and higher in a, a sense of menace. So fear starts to show up in the body, attention and anxiousness, wanting it to stop. <laughs> Musically and visually, uh, Ren has given us now some relief. Uh, some resolution we're coming down. He's bringing us down tonically through the guitar. The scene is settling down. The lighting has settled down. His body is starting to relax. And this is an important shift. We're only about halfway through this, and something's changing. We've seen a buildup, a harshness, a uh, uh, mean-spirited, uh, some people might even label as an evilness coming out of Ren. Now yeah. we're seeing a shift. His entire aspect softens into it, and it pulls us in. It gives us, ah, thank you. It gives us relief. Uh, and this is what uh, many of the reactors have been identifying and noticing within themselves. It's like, oh, yes, let's see where this goes. More curiosity. <laughs> I've been taking some time to be distant. I've been taking some time to be still. I've been taking some time to be by myself and I've spent half my life ill. But just as sure as the tide starts turning, just as sure as the night has dawn, just as sure as the rainfall soon runs dry when you stand in an eye of a storm. And this is a space where now, Hmm. Ren so skillfully is pulling us in. He's looking us in the eye, and things are starting to feel more hopeful. There's starting to be a resolution. So we start to feel this this inner joy. We have this ability. These mirror neurons allow us, while we're staying empathic, to start to sense. Yes, let's let's go with this. Let's ride this wave. And in this, uh, Ren specifically calls out the shadow. I was made to be tested and twisted. I was made to be broken and beat. I was made by his hand, it's a part of his plan that I stand on my own two feet. And you know me, my will is eternal. And you know me, you've met me before. Face to face with a beast, I will rise from the east and I'll settle on the ocean floor. And I go by many names also. Some people know me as hope. Some people know me as the voice that you hear when you loosen the noose on the rope. And you know how I know that I'll prosper? Because I stand here beside you today. I have stood in the flames that cremated my brain and I didn't once flinch your shame. So cower at the man I've become when I sing from the top of my lungs. This is another one of those spaces where the reactors have been caught by surprise once again. Yep. We're so deep into the building of this sandwich, we're thinking, when's the sandwich going to be ready? When's the last flare coming on? This guy has now made me hungry. Now I want a sandwich. Like, I understand the sandwich metaphor, but damn it. Yeah, I want to I wanna eat now. Thanks, bro. Huh. He now goes into his singing voice. 
uh, not speaking voice, not angry voice, not harsh wren, calm wren, not rapping, etc. It's now it's a singing voice. And it's pulling in this exaltation, this name of hope. He's already called out hope. And we're starting to feel it. He's now risen up. He's stood up. And internally, uh, the reactors start to soften. They start moving with the song and the beat. And something happens within the reactors as they see this aspect of Ren emerging that we haven't seen yet. Another aspect of the ego of the self. Well, it, it also kind of felt like a climax. It was re reaching the climactic point to where it was okay to feel that way. It felt acceptable to feel like we made it through the hard time. Now we can, now, like he said, he, Ren is standing up. Ren is being a little bit more uh, vocal. And then he's talking about the, the surprise for the pitch change and the vocal aspect of, of that part. Yeah, like... I think that us, not only as like a reactor, but us as, you know, fans, at, you know, who were just witnessing or just people just experiencing this performance. Yeah. Like, I think that it was, we knew that the climax was there, but we knew that we were, we had, we had gotten through the hard part, if you know what I mean. Even be the, the true self of Ren that's uh, Ren's letting us see. I'm the one that's been moving along in this ride, doing this dance. It's an eternal dance, a dance with the shadow. The I won't retire, I'll stand in your fire, inspire the me to be strong. And when I am gone, I will rise in the music that I left behind. Ferocious, persistent, immortal like you, we're a coin to different sides. section uh, many of the people that have been viewing been pulled in and start feeling the exaltation that is coming out through his body the dancing uh, it's almost as though it's a dancing for joy and a right the victory you know the the climax the outcome the we did it you know we did it that's 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 what that part felt like to me it was like holy shit we did it we got through and to some people this feels like every day you fight this every single day and then at some aspect of the day, this is your point where you're like, fuck yeah, the rest of the day is going to be good because I just got through it. You know, like I totally, totally get that. Uh, being reborn. The only layers, the main layers that the, I'm discussing here are referencing the psychology of the shadow side and then how it shows up in the body of the viewer through the, the Vegas system. There are many other interpretations that can start to be laid on as to what all this represents, uh, whether we start bringing in different faith views and religious views from around the globe. But in essence, it's landing in each of us because we're all human and we're all experiencing something with him. But we're not just viewers, we're experiencing it also. And it's not simply a passive experience. It's the That's such a great way to describe that because it's not like you're not just watching a YouTube video. You know, like you were... Was this video nine and a half minutes ish? For almost ten minutes, you're outside of yourself, looking at yourself, and for some of us, most of us, hopefully, you're learning how to fix yourself, and you're looking at yourself from a different lens. And yeah. Go ahead and follow and subscribe to this guy, Lower the Shields. This is a fantastic video. The music's not done. Our nervous systems want to hear musical pieces complete themselves. And in this, Ren just stopped playing. You've been taking us up and down, increasing tension and giving us resolution all throughout this uh, sandwich, and all of a sudden you just stop. That brings up more uncertainty and more curiosity 
the uncertainty will start to show up. But now there's starting, I've been noticing within the reactors that there's a level of trust, like, well, I already want to see what happens next versus an apprehension. There's a different kind of a curiosity that's showing up along with this level of uncertainty. When I was 17 years old, I shouted out into an empty room, into a blank canvas that I would defeat the forces of evil. And for the next 10 years of my life, I suffered the consequences with autoimmunity, illness, and psychosis. As I got older, I realized there were no real winners and there were no real losers in psychological warfare, but there were victims and there were students it wasn't David versus Goliath. It was a pendulum, eternally swaying from the dark to the light. And the more intensely that the light shone, the darker the shadow it cast. It was never really a battle for me to win. It was an eternal dance. And like a dance, the more rigid I became, the harder it got. The more I cursed my clumsy footsteps, the more I struggled. So I got older and I learned to relax and I learned to soften and that dance got easier. It is this eternal dance that separates human beings from angels, from demons, from gods. And I must not forget, we must not forget that we are human beings. Gah. That gets me every time, dude. <clears throat> That's, uh, uh, okay, I want to listen to what this gentleman has to say now. Me too, so dude. Often, uh... <laughs> me too, dude. Like, you don't even have to say very much after that. Like, I don't even know how many times he's watched this, but something in there... Me too, dude. Um, as we saw in the clips early on, right at the beginning, is that many of the reactors get to this moment and they're speechless. Yeah. They will might even name it. They'll sit silently. Sometimes there's a hard cut and they'll move on and uh, take a break and come back when they've kind of uh, even name it. They'll sit silently. Sometimes there's a hard cut and they'll move on and... I just ended the video, I think. I think that I just ended... No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I think I just ended the video. I mean, what else was I supposed to do? Uh, take a break and come back when they've kind of... Ah. Uh, reconfigured themselves a little bit. So the power of a performance like this is activating us... Uh, it activates our shadow size, our different aspects of ourselves, our ego states. There's so many different theories in psychology that start to describe what that's like for us as our inner critic shows up and uh, experiences like that. Being able to listen to Ren's words at the end, here he is speaking to us, explaining his his process, his his experiences, his life experiences can be useful, but also one of the things that he's calling out is being able to identify that what helped him, and it may continue to help him, is the ability to learn how to relax, to soften. That's one of the things that uh, mindfulness practices uh, can help us learn how to do. Uh, there's a lot of different practices that uh, are useful. Therapy can be useful for identifying the different states and learning how to engage with that's probably one of the hardest things for me is uh, just practicing self love. That's a uh, I'm you know mid thirties, thirty six to be exact, and like I have a lot on my plate, you know, like a lot of us do, and it's really hard not to let it kind of leak over and you know spoil out and ruin some really good times and moments and everything. And sometimes we have no control with them rather than resist it's the resistance that tends to cause us our the challenges throughout life as we quit resisting we start finding out that something happens and 
one of the main takeaways that Jung has offered us, Carl Jung, around the shadow is as we start to integrate the shadow into who we are, things relax, they soften. Then it's like every once in a while there's upset and then there's calm. There's upset and there's calm. And this is what life is. Uh, life will bring us challenges throughout. Uh, we all go through it. It may feel like it's a battle between demons and angels, yet we can soften it because we're not gods. We are human and we can move back and forth through what we have going on uh, in the content creators out here that are putting material out onto YouTube around mental wellness uh, are offering the world a sense of authenticity and vulnerability. Everyone, anyone watching this to take care of yourself. Absolutely. Recognize that self and also recognize when the shadow self is active. It shows up in so many different ways. You don't have to do it alone. Uh, that's, a, that's another aspect of once we notice that this is common to be in human, we can also recognize that, well, I'm not alone. And what do I do with it? Thank you for watching. And links to resources, uh, whether it's uh, mental health resources or mindfulness resources, will also be listed in the description down below. Thank you, man. Be well. That was a really, really well done video. I am going to subscribe. I like this video.